energy and radiation pressure. So we have a couple of goals for this session. First we'll talk about the energy and the momentum carried by an electromagnetic wave. Then we'll go on and talk about radiation pressure. That's pressure associated with an electromagnetic wave, which just simply could be a beam of light that shines on an object. Okay, so we'll start out with talking about energy and intensity. So it turns out that exactly 50% of the energy carried by an EM wave, an electromagnetic wave, is in the electric fields, and of course the other 50% has to be somewhere, and that's in the magnetic fields. So we often talk about the intensity of a beam, that's the power per unit area. And if you, for instance, think about sunlight that comes down to the Earth's surface, that has an average intensity of about 1,000 watts per square meter. So this is why people are uh, so excited about solar panels, because it's really, if you take a square meter solar panel, you get 1,000 joules of energy hitting that every second when it's out in the bright sunlight. So lots of energy there. Now, for a plane wave, the average intensity is given by lots of different uh, forms the equation here. So the intensity is, for instance, maximum electric field strength in the beam times maximum magnetic field strength over 2 times mu naught, and mu naught is our 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp or something like that uh, that we used for um, all our magnetic field equations. Uh, okay, so you can say that um, B max is E max over C so you can replace B max by E max over C and get the second form of the equation, E max squared over 2C mu naught. Or you can replace um, E max by C B max and get C B max squared over 2 mu naught. Okay, so let's say you take just a standard laser pointer. That might be a 3 milliwatt laser. That's the power output. And its beam might have a radius of a millimeter. And if you throw that into the equation, uh, what equation? Well, this equation. Uh, you take your power, 0 0.003 watts, divide by your beam area in meters, and that's really a very small number, that beam area, because you're talking about a radius of 0 0.001 meters. So you divide those two numbers, uh, you divide one number by the other, and you get 955 watts per square meter. And of course, that's comparable to that number we just quoted for sunlight. So just like you don't want, want to look directly into the sun, you don't want to look directly into a beam from a laser. They are very similar in brightness. And this is just a standard, simple laser pointer. You can get lasers that are much, much, much brighter than this one. Okay, so let's say our beam coming out of our laser is a plane wave. And so we can go back and use these equations at the top and say if we know that I is 955 watts per square meter. Well, what's E max? So we can use the I is E max squared over 2C mu naught equation and solve for E max. You should try that yourself and verify that you get E max is 850 volts per meter. That's a very fairly substantial field there. Now, if you want uh, to find B max, you could do a similar thing. You could use the last form of the equation, or you can say B max is E max over C. That's the easy way to do it. Just take your E max value divide by the speed of light and you get B max. And you get something that's, you know, a 20th or so of the uh, Earth's gravitational field. Okay, so there's an example of these uh, intensity equations. Okay, so let's carry on and talk about momentum and uh, radiation pressure. So, light has no mass at all and yet it can carry momentum. So, if you just think momentum is mv, you would think, well, m is zero, momentum must be zero. So, mv does not apply to electromagnetic waves. And that's the first thing to, to know. There is momentum. We can have equations that, uh, sorry, experiments that really verify that. And we've proved that light reflecting from an object transfers momentum and light ref reflecting from a surface transfers twice as much momentum as light is absorbed. Saw the same kind of thing when we did our happy ball, sad ball experiment in class. So you have a very bouncy ball, you fire it at a wall, it bounces straight back, uh, versus a ball that goes in, hits the wall, stops dead, 
twice as much momentum is transferred in the case where the ball comes straight back, just like twice as much momentum is transferred when the light is reflected. So we often talk about this as a radiation pressure. So light incident on the material is associated with a force over the area of the beam that is a pressure. So here's our equation for radiation pressure when all the energy is absorbed. Our pressure, P, is I over C. And the intensity divided by the speed of light is also the energy density, the energy per unit volume of the beam. And we actually uh, talked about that kind of issue back in fluids, right? When we had uh, Bernoulli's equation, which had energy densities all over it and pressure terms. So we've seen that kind of thing before. Okay, now if the uh, energy is reflected straight back, then you just simply have a factor of two in your equation. The pressure is double what it is for the case where it's absorbed. So let's do an example. So you can make spacecrafts that are called solar sails, and they have these very uh, large area solar uh, reflective sails. And that's what you're trying to do to uh, propel the spacecraft through space. So let's try and design one. So ours has a mass of 500 kilograms. It's the same distance that we are from the sun. It's out in space, but uh, you know, a little bit away from the Earth. And at this distance, distance the intensity of sunlight is about 1,500 watts per square meter. Well, wait a second. Didn't we just say it was 1,000? Well, this 1,500 number is for light above the Earth's atmosphere. The 1,000 number is when, after it's passed through the atmosphere and some has been reflected back into space. Okay, it gets cut down to about a thousand. Okay, but this is in the, on the spacecraft out in space, so we can use the, the larger number, the 1500 number. So we're going to assume that the light is 100% reflected, so we can use our pressure equation that has the factor of 2 in it. And so if we find the pressure, we get twice the intensity divided by this massive number C, right, this huge number, so that really gets us a very, very small amount of pressure. 1 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons per meter squared. And if you turn that into a force, remember we have this very large area, but our force is still a small number, right? Because you get this very small pressure times 10,000 meters squared. We still only get a tenth of a newton of force. And that's the force from the radiation pressure. Don't forget, there's a gravitational force too. If you try the equation GMM over R squared, you should work out that that force, the gravitational force, is 3 newtons uh, toward the sun. So this spacecraft will feel a 3 newton force toward the sun, just a 0.1 newton force away from the sun. So this spacecraft wouldn't work very well as a solar sail. It would actually just eventually fall into the sun. So how would we redesign it? Well, we actually would... Uh, need even more area. I mean, the area we started with was 100 meters by 100 meters, but we need even more, or we need much less mass, or both, to get a net force away from the sun. Okay, so it is challenging to design these things, but uh, it is possible to do it. Okay, so that's a good introduction to uh, some of these electromagnetic wave ideas.